Okay, you guys, so here's the mess I made today. <laughs> it's like a gradation light uh, white yellow to um, an orangey color. Um, I had a big glob of white yellow, and there's my water. Kind of looks like some kind of Chinese mango pudding. Um, so I use this brush, I quite like it. It's called, um, <laughs> Almond Wash Brush USA One. Um, it's like a flat brush, but it has had its years. So here are my color studies again. Um, since we last talked, I created this third one here. Um, I'm still, I think, more happy with the second one. I think it has more nice breakup of space. So here is um, me blocking out the light in the middle thumbnail. Um, you can see the octopus to the right. Um, there's going to be me, me at the bottom of the ramen. Um, yeah, so just using acrylic and doing a gradation with light yellow to an orange color. starting a vlog on um, a digital painting I've been working on for quite a bit. It's um, a picture of a girl in a um, taco truck in Lima, Peru. It was one of like the assignments I did for a class, but I never um, quite finished it. And um, I kind of want to dedicate this vlog to kind of um, making it to that finish um so yeah i hope you enjoy this vlog and um yeah there'll be uh i think i'll be talking a lot about color um my process in um just getting to the finish um the finish is a very hard thing um i think because um a lot of things are solved in the beginning um 80 percent like composition um, the figure, the figure's pose, um, uh, but the last 20% of a painting is just like rendering and rendering and rendering and um, sometimes you feel like you just kind of uh, lose, uh, like a lose kind of like that uh, beginning impetus uh, when you first started painting. Um, so this will just be how I process the end of a painting. So I hope you enjoy this. Okay, so I have my layers um, palette here. Um, let me close some groups so you see what I'm doing. Um, I have this mask here. Um, let's see if I trash that, um, you could see all like the gross uh, painting outside of it. Um, so let me undo that. Um, I kind of have this clip on it to uh, realize what the border is. Um, my guides, let's see what I have in here. My original line drawing um, on multiply. Um, so you could see what it was like <coughs> before I painted this. Um, Put it back on to a low opacity. Turn back on my color. Um, I think I had some perspective guides just to help me realize like what the size of this character was. Um, even though he's like um, lower, because um, we are in the interior of a taco truck, um, and I think the assignment was to put it in Lima. So pretty random 
so hence the empanadas um, on the table here and um, this little doll playing some kind of, I don't know, uh, I hope I researched this. <laughs> I hope this was some Peruvian instrument I looked up, but I'm sorry if it's not. Um, and um, oops, empanada maker, um, some kind of uh, dough roller. Um, here I have some things I looked up, like what was in a taco truck. Um, sorry about that. Um, this is like some type of fryer, uh, a burner, some piping, um, pictures um, uh, with like a lady and some kind of um, hat, um, some uh, sauces here. Uh, yeah, um, purple corn because I remember going with Miss G to uh, I think the restaurant is called Lola's um, where they serve a purple corn drink or something like that um, and some kind of uh, lampshade. Um, so yeah, I think um, the color I'm happier than I was before. I thought the color was a little too brown originally. Let's see if I have my Wacom connected. Yeah, um, but I'm a little happier with it now. I could show you what's in my foreground, which I labeled FG, middle ground MG, and background BG. Um, so if I turn those off, here is BG. Um, this is based on my buddy, Mr. S. He always wears a cap. Um, so I placed him there. Um, the middle ground is, probably should not have this blue spot here, but um, I erase that out. Uh, put it back in the background. Uh, so that is the middle ground and I kind of separated it. Um, there might be a better way to do this, but um, I separate like the girl and you can see like I still have some work to fill in behind her so that's like the work of like the 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 finishing 20% part that I mentioned is so painful <laughs> is um, you know just filling in these gaps you know <laughs> so here's the lamps on another group. Um, I think I placed, yeah, I separated by like the left wall here, the table. So yeah, I'm just turning off each and layer to show you what's beneath it all. So yeah. So as I'm gonna clean this up, I'm gonna try to, you know, paint each thing uh, behind the objects. Um, I just, the, the way, the reason why I look so crappy is, um, I literally cut out, um, the line drawing each for each part and like paint it over it, you know? Um, so that's kind of my way, my lazy way of, um, you know, keeping some line and then painting on top of it. Uh, foreground is, um, of the things in the corner the pipe here that um, hopefully will be painted better soon the seat the corn and the fryers and piping and um, paper boxes right here so yeah um, color um, I was playing with the color here um, of the blue um, I would just go image uh, adjustments, hue, saturation, and literally play with what this nighttime look would be. So I ended up with a more um, like a medium between a cyan and a blue um, just to balance out um, some of the oranges, um, the yellow oranges in this picture. Um, I put this kind of bird texture on her jacket. Um, and I believe 
this is uh, I did reference this um, it is some type of bird <laughs> in Peru so let me clean out that sleeve Um, yeah, so it really is just rendering and um, brushwork to the end. And um, this is the point in the process where you turn on your loud music and just turn off your brain a little bit. Um, my recommendations, I have been listening <laughs> once again to some of my favorite episodes of um, Mayday Air Disaster on YouTube. <laughs> Um, sometimes I feel so like ADD, like I cannot sit down, but when I turn on that channel, it is amazing because you hear about like all the, um, um, survivor stories and sometimes not survivor stories of these airplane crashes. It always starts with something like, um, oh, um, you think it's a, um, like a 9-11 type of case where there's terrorism or some kind of uh, military attack but it's actually just um, like the black box reveals and then in the end they show what the black box reveals and it's just some like misfiring of some electrical signal in the plane um, but that kind of stuff like makes me sit down like like for for a long time rendering this kind of stuff so if you guys have suggestions of what you listen to when you're in the so-called flow, um, text me or email me. Um, I'm always up to learning about new podcasts. Um, another good one I love to listen to is a lot of the fitness and um, kind of self-improvement type of podcasts like um, Rich Roll. Um, has a really good one. Um, I think he's based in like Malibu or something. Um, yeah, I think that's always motivating. Um, let's see. Yeah, so you can see um, I'm not staying in one area. I'm kind of cleaning all over the picture here. And the back here is kind of what like I discussed about pattern and texture last week. Um, these characters are kind of like a texture. Um, you don't really care about them because they're so in the background. Um, but they're, they're literally like blobs of color right now. Um, and obviously I do want to clean it up, but it is not the most important thing for sure. Yeah. Here's a, a llama or yama right here. <laughs> And I am using a Wacom. Um, I kind of do both. For work, I do use a Cintiq. Um, at home, I use a Wacom. And um, I think there's benefits to both. I think some people do get back problems using, um, uh, I think it's a Cintiq, you know? Um, Depends on the person and their preference. Okay, so this lampshade, um, I have a reference here. Oops, not that one. Yeah, so, oh yeah, sorry. So, so distracted, but um, yeah, I originally thought of a pattern for this one here, which I kind of just, um, warped uh, I got a pattern from and then I put it on but then I think when I zoomed out I realized it was taking too
too much attention. There was just too much detail there. So that's like a pattern that I felt like was too much. Um, let's see if I could find the reference for this lamp here. There you go. Yeah, so I think I just typed in like Peru lamp shade or something. Some kind of knit material. So I try to do some kind of um, texture here that made it look like it was knit, but I think it's still looking a little metallic. So I think I definitely have to work on this texture somehow. Maybe I will grab a texture later, um, like a bigger texture that um, has like a more of like a grid. Actually, maybe I could just try it right now. Let's see, grid texture. Okay, so I'm gonna draw maybe This is totally like a test. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's literally playing around until you feel like you get something right. Okay. Just have to make it look like it's woven somehow. Playing with some over uh, like layer types. That looks kind of cool. Divide. Okay, let's do. And um, yeah, as a thing turns, it gets texture gets narrower at the end. So I'm gonna warp. Uh, see something like that. Okay. Let me find the center grid. That kind of fakes it. That's the shadow of these little jangly things at the top. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I will, I don't know, the thing when I merge these layers, sometimes it takes out the divide. Let's see what happens there. Can I put it back on divide? Okay, that works. Okay, so I'm going to erase out the texture bottom here so it's not on these tassels. Soft brush. To work that out. Okay. 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 I kind of like to play around and then jump from here to there. Um, hence the ADD. <laughs> okay. Let's see what else needs some love in. Oh yeah, so the pants here, um, since we were talking about texture last week, um, I reserve the texture only in some areas. Um, the rest I kind of just wiped out with my brush. Kind of want to see where I want to describe the form. So yeah, um, always remember um, uh, there are hard edges, like right here, I'm clearly making a hard edge and there are soft edges where you blend in. And that's kind of necessary in understanding um, folds um, and just painting in general. There's always hard and soft edges. This is a soft edge. This is her foot. Okay. Oops. I don't want to print. Um, okay. Looking at the color now. And of course you could always like go to the top. See like this is like my original color thinking. Um, like very, very warm. And then I think as I started painting, I got more cooler. Um, I wanted to emphasize more that it was like a nighttime scene, um, but this definitely does look lively. So this is, I think if I make a portfolio um, 
page like this could be one of the options then you would do like um, shrink it down and then do um sorry let me copy it yeah you would shrink it down copy it um and then make different options for to show um if i go hue saturation you'd make different options to show you know like what you were thinking like Ooh, this like, what is she cooking up here? This looks super um, Frankenstein-y, you know? Um, you could show options and show like, oh, this is what I ended up with, like, um, more of a cool night type of scene. And each of these three has a different mood um, just based on the color. So turn those off. Um, Trying to think if this corn here um, will look better if there was a um, what they call a kicker, um, some kind of highlight at the tip. Yeah, it does um, kind of highlight at the tip to pop it. Um, and to pop it, you do need to darken the things around it. So. I'm going to darken this, oops, darken this towel I have here. Um, um, and then um, I was taught, um, if you ever draw a room, you know, uh, always include things like trims, like um, right here I have a trim to the bottom of the room. Um, I think it's called a wainscot. Um, so you always show the edge of a room and how it meets the floor here. Um, there's plugs um, and like, I don't know, probably some kind of complicated wiring in a top uh, taco truck, which I wouldn't understand, but we're artists, so we fake things. <laughs> um, let's see, and then um, of course wear and tear um, in the walls. You could always leave some kind of grunge. Um, so I think this. One is like a um, kind of like those to go crates with a shelf on top. It's got a little complicated, so let me clean this up. Um, for now, let's make this a white shelf. Um, with a, make it a blue shadow now. For now, under her. And um, yeah, what you don't see is I'm pressing the number key um, as I paint. So if I want a full um, opacity of this like black cap lid, um, I have to press hard actually because my pen has sensitivity, but I would just press zero and then I would have the full opacity. If I press nine, it gets less eight oops <laughs> I, I have pen pressure on so it's kind of hard to tell let me turn it off brushes sorry uh brushes brush settings if i turn off um transfer i think um let's get a hard brush okay teacher doesn't know what she's doing <laughs> okay they're still transfer on. I'm sorry. Let me use one now. <laughs> okay, so yeah, if I press um, zero, it'll get full opacity. If I press nine, it'll be less. Eight will be less. Seven will be less. Six, even less. Five, less. Four. Yeah, so one, 
that's opacity of one, that's opacity of zero. So um, with just um, pressing things with your left hand, um, you can get those opacities. So you don't have to keep, um, uh, you know, doing it through either brush settings or um, however else people do. I don't even know how, how, how people paint without pressing number keys. <laughs> uh, they probably paint like full opacity all the time, which is insane to me. Um, yeah, because I think I, I kind of um, grew... Uh, I mean, I, I did oil paint before I digital painted, but I think a lot of my college experience was digital painting. So I kind of, my painting kind of grew with my digital painting. So I'm just like, oh man, how do people paint so crazy? <laughs> um, shout out to Mr. R. Um, we both like Frank Frazetta. <laughs> yeah, just those classic people, how they painted with, um, gouache or acrylic or oil is very, very impressive. Um, okay, so there's a shadow here. Um, it's reddish, so I don't know if it's too hot. I'm gonna put back some cooling for the shadow here. I've always liked line work that is reddish. I think um, part of that comes from um, uh, I took some contemporary painting class and the teacher um, made us kind of do our line work in cadmium red in oil so I always thought it looked really cool um, but if it does draw too much attention then I should paint over it So she's holding a little, I don't know what I was thinking when I did this. <laughs> um, yeah, this was a painting I started a while back. I think, I think this is like horchata or something. <laughs> Funny thing is I, I finally like landed in Peru, like for the first time just as a, um, which I'm gonna call layover, like two months ago. So now I can finally say I've been to Peru and I can legitly paint this painting. But I think when I first did this, I was like, I have no idea what what Peru is like, and I still don't. I I, I shouldn't be painting this. <laughs> okay, there's probably some kind of refraction going on with the glass here. I'm gonna totally fake it. It's gonna probably bend at some weird angle. Okay. We're artists, we don't know physics. <laughs> okay. And I put it like a little, like a cartoon cheek thing here. Um, oh, fun thing was um, I finally watched uh, Kiki's delivery, delivery service, the Miyazaki film, like, um, I haven't seen it in like probably like a decade, but I was like, man, it's so true to like artist life. Like she's like this witch and then she like faces burnout. She can't fly anymore. And before she was able to talk to her black cat, but when she faces burnout, she can't talk to her black cat Gigi anymore, right? And um, at the end of the film, at least in um, this, English version I watched, um, uh, she was never able to talk to Gigi again. Like he just starts, like he starts meowing in the middle of the film and then stops talking um, at, 
like all the way to the end and then I was like why can she fly again but not be able to um, talk to your cat at the end and I, I like totally went through like a reddit like thing um, at the end of my day and and um, yeah there were all these like theories from fans like why Kiki can't talk to her black cat Gigi anymore and finally like the producer of the film I don't think it's even Miyazaki I'm, yeah it's like some Japanese producer and he like finally came out and was like I made Gigi not the cat, black cat not be able to talk in the end because Kiki was talking to herself like the whole movie and like like Gigi was always a cat but because Kiki grew up like because it's like a whole movie of like maturity and belonging because Kiki grew up like um, she doesn't need her like alter ego anymore like um, the black cat was like just the black cat top king was just her imagination the whole time and I was just like Oh my gosh, like that's why like a classic, you know, like stays with you from when you're a kid to like, um, to now. I was just like, and, and it was just so representative of like the artist experience because it was like, um, there literally is a painter in the, the film and like, um, she kind of like counsels Kiki like during, during her burnout session. And she's like, sometimes, some days I can't paint anymore, you know, and I just have to um, uh, forget about painting. And then, um, because something that used to be so easy to do becomes like, just like crazy hard. And then you just have to realize why you did it in the first place, that kind of thing. And I was like, whoa, that's powerful. <laughs> Okay, so, um, yeah, these are kind of like umbrellas, um, in the back. They're made of straw, <laughs> uh, so just imitating that. Um, finally ate a real empanada recently in South America, so I felt legitly like I can paint this. These are like the holes for ventilation for any pastry. <laughs> like a fork did it. So I'm painting like the, you know, the what they, uh, my art director used to call the lip of a thing. Um, so like an edge. Okay. This is very messy, but it will all be done in a year or five. <laughs> okay. All right, I better should go back to work after my lunch break. Um, thank you so much for watching and for all those that uh, leave comments. Um, I do realize I have my comments turned off in my YouTube, um, but if you wanna um, just give a shout out or um, reach out to me, you can always um, uh, email me. Um, it's in my YouTube uh, site or text me. Um, if I know you. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for watching. Bye.